Not so long ago, a car was a Holden or a Ford. A vacuum cleaner was a Hoover and milk was just milk. Now our choices have exploded. My uh, supermarket has 150 different kinds of yogurts. It's also about what kind of work you're going to do, where you're going to live. From mobile phone plans to mortgages, choice is the mantra of our modern economy. If some choice is good, more must be better. But do you ever wonder if it's getting out of hand? Could too much choice actually make you ill? If there's one place choice rules, it's the USA. I've come to Philadelphia, to the largest shopping mall in America, to meet a man who takes his choices very seriously. It's kind of insane because I will, I will have to know all the different options within the choice. You Once must from be a an different absolute part nightmare of... to go shopping with. Yes. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Hall has always believed there's such a thing as the perfect choice. Take his attempts to buy a new mattress. Normal people would have laid on a couple of beds, said, oh, I like this one, and then just bought it. <sighs> but no, I had to make the best choice. There are water beds, air mattresses, coil spring, and like uh, foam mattresses like Tempur-Pedic. Probably a good two or three months researching mattresses and all. We'll find out the results of Nick's extreme mattress shopping later. Meanwhile, I'm off to prestigious Swarthmore College to meet Professor Barry Schwartz. His questioning of the merits of choice began with the strange behaviour of his students, who'd been given every life opportunity. And I was discovering that as they neared graduation, they were miserable, they were tortured. So what happened is they'd go and work at Starbucks, or the equivalent of Starbucks, for a year or two, hoping that one morning they'd wake up knowing what they were supposed to do. Then, in 2000, Barry came across an astonishing experiment, which we're about to recreate. We've managed to get 24 different kinds of jam to try, and we're going to see how many people buy. Oh, jams. Jams. Wonderful holiday gifts. <laughs> try them all. <laughs> try them all. <laughs> really? The study found that when 24 jams were displayed, lots of people came to the table, but hardly anyone chose to buy. That is good. That's the good one? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. OK, now we're going to try just six jams. Yeah. Our choices. Okay, I just have the sales tax on When there were only six jams, fewer people visited the table, but amazingly, 10 times as many jams were sold. When I read this result, a light bulb went on in my head because everybody's business model is to give people 24 jams or 50 jams or 1,000 jams on the assumption that the more variety you offer people, the more satisfied they'll be with what they choose. So it is amazing. Barry started running his own experiments and a pattern soon emerged. As choices went up, satisfaction initially rose. But at a point, surprisingly, the satisfaction line reversed direction. It begs the question, why? One reason is the more choices we have, the more we regret the ones that got away. Choosing from six jams means five are rejected. Choosing from 24 means losing out on 23. We know from lots of research that losses feel more bad than gains feel good. The loss involved in each of those no's mounts up and it takes all the satisfaction out of the thing you end up choosing. There is another reason. There's simply a limit to how many choices our poor brains can handle. This is your favourite place, is it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Here, near the University of Pennsylvania, I've come to find out the limits of my brain. I'd like you to get some bread for me. A pumpernickel, a raisin, a country white. Psychology professor Paul Rosen is testing how many items I can hold in my working memory. A multi-grain Tuscan and a wheat sandwich look. Hi, I'd like to order some bread. All right. Uh, a pumpernickel, a sourdough, 
an olive bread, a white sandwich, an olive. Did I already say that? No. Um, uh, uh, that's all the bread I can remember. Did you want to slice? No, thank you. How'd you do? Well, I got six, so I don't think that's I did very well. Seven plus or minus two. Six is seven plus or minus two. That's what you should get. That's how much we can hold in our working seven memory. Seven things, yes. More than seven, and our brains have to work much harder, grouping the options, making a sequence of decisions. The cost of exceeding the magic number is that you have to do more processing, segmentation, take more time. It can drive you crazy. It shuts down the brain, it produces paralysis, people freeze. So what did Nick decide once he'd sifted through 200 odd mattresses? I didn't buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I still have it, like this 20-year-old mattress that, that, like, that my parents had. I still have it. But there are far worse things than wasting three months not choosing a mattress. Earlier this year, Nick had to find a new apartment. I physically saw 50 apartments. That does not count all of the places that I called, all the people I spoke to on the phone, it did make me depressed. It made me anxious, and it made me unsettled. There has been an explosion of clinical depression in the United States and other developed societies. So I have suggested that one source of this depression is that people have so much freedom of choice and they don't know how to make choices, so they're mis sufficiently miserable that it can become clinical. Hi, Dr. Schwartz. Hi. Hi. So Barry wondered, if too much choice could make people sick, who was most at risk? Read each item and indicate how much you agree with it or not on a seven-point scale. Um, it should only take you a couple of minutes. He devised a psychological scale to pick out the extreme choosers. He calls them maximizers and tested 3,000 people. When I watch TV, I channel surf even while attempting to watch. Renting TV. videos is really difficult. I'm always struggling to pick When them up. shopping, I have a hard time finding clothing that I love. It turned out one in 10 people are extreme maximizers, and that group are less happy and far more prone to depression. Let's have it. That one's mine. Go for it. Yours is 32, which puts you quite low on the scale. And you, I've seen worse. <laughs> but not many. But not much. Not much, not much. With a score of 61, Nick now realises he is an extreme uh. maximiser. Inspired by Barry, he's trying to limit the number of options he considers to just a few. And I'm finding that, hey, I made this choice and it worked out just fine and I was okay and I could go on with my life. So, wow, that's, you know, that's novel. <laughs> In fact, avoiding options is how most of us cope with the choice onslaught. After all, how many of us have the same breakfast or lunch every single day? And while no one wants no choice, is it time for society to realize there is such a thing as too much choice? I've been asked now to talk at 20 or 30 different gatherings. Eyes light up, and people are sort of sitting on the edge of their chairs. And it's not because I know something they don't know. It's because I've put a name to something that they experience in their bones on a daily basis. This worship of the god of choice has just gone too far.